Hello and welcome, I'm Wolfgang and this is my August video newsletter. Now before I begin, I need to state the following. My birthplace is the earth and my race is human. My political views are freedom and I practice the religion of love. Now over 15 years of sharing inspiration, hundreds of free videos and more I think people will know and understand and see this as confirmation that I practice what I preach and send out a universal message of spiritual love, caring, respect in everything that I do. Now I mention this as this month's video will offend some people. Hence I have to remind you of a saying by an unknown author and this goes as follows. You and you alone are responsible for your own thoughts. Now let me quickly clarify what this means in a fair and objective manner. If someone annoys you, irritates you or insults you, it is not them doing this to you. It is you deciding that this is how you want to see the situation. For example, if a particular politician angers you on TV, remember that there are other people who haven't been angered. In fact, everyone reacts differently. And your anger is your choice, not that of the politician. So if you are in an argument with your spouse, as an example, it is you that decides whether it is an argument or not. It is you that decides to retaliate or ignore what has been said, not the other person. If someone calls you an idiot or insults you, it is only that you decide to see it as such. You could decide to feel sorry for that uh, person and view them as maybe misguided. You could even decide that maybe they said what they said because of false previous information on a topic. There are various reasons for this person's actions. You could choose to ignore that individual but somehow most people choose to throw fuel on the fire and blow everything out of proportion. A friend explained to me recently that the thoughts that travel along our neural pathways when we are in a stress situation follow two possible paths. The one is the fight or flight path and the other is a millisecond slower the analyze and understand path. Hence, the majority of people react impulsively and often aggressively rather than thinking before they speak. So, spontaneous actions by obnoxious people can be scientifically explained. They don't think before they act. Go back to what your parents said. Count to 10 before you act. Don't let it be primal. Now, couple this with a perverse amount of negative media conditioning and the masses end up being programmed to be greedy, arrogant and self-righteous. Hence, they have these attitudes. So, how do we cope with this? You know, this morning, uh, another great quote came to mind by an unknown author that stated, the flower of stupidity blossoms in more gardens than we will ever realize. Nice one, huh? That explains a lot. Now, why do I mention all of this? Well, not only on a daily basis, but with more aggression and selfishness than ever before and more regularly, I'm noticing more and more people fostering hatred, judgmentalism and aggression towards their fellow human beings while claiming that everyone else is not respecting their religious beliefs, opinions and rights. How about that? Again, before I continue, let me repeat. My message, all my messages, are about respect and love towards each other. Now, as this is what I believe, I'm led to question whether that is the possible reason many of us have tolerated an ever-increasing group of these selfish people who are claiming it is their right to be ignorant and obnoxious. 
Sadly, all of this, I think, has finally forced everyone else to abide by their naive views to the detriment of everyone else around them. You will immediately know who I'm talking about. It's those opinionated hypocrites who always complain and make trouble. Sadly, we all know such people. Maybe that's why political correctness has gotten out of proportion. You see, I believe they are increasing in numbers because us decent people are trying to literally accommodate and only look for the good in someone without realizing that these individuals will take and take and take until that bubble bursts. And if you don't believe me, just look around at all the killing, the hatred, the murder that has gone on in this world this month alone. Being nice isn't working anymore. Something has to be done. Tolerating hypocrites is just making them worse. Playing this political correctness game is not working. I'm sorry. Something has to be done. So here is an example. I recently completed a dissertation on whether complexity thinking inhibits innovation amongst leadership in multinational companies. And I launched a keynote on it. In other words, whether bureaucracy, red tape, and thousands of policies have a negative rather than a positive effect on companies and individuals. In fact, studies have shown that productivity in companies worldwide has dropped radically in the last 15 years due to the emergence of all of these policies, etc. Now, most of the result of different religions and cultures demanding various rights at work. But we need to backtrack here. What is a job? A job is something that you can do for a company to drive bottom line profits for that company. And in return, that said company pays you a salary for completing your job efficiently. That's the simple, straightforward explanation. Who allowed, this is my question, entitlement to emerge in this process? See, the company has an event, invites all employees, suddenly the core job for which they have been employed is no longer good enough. Now, certain individuals force their belief systems onto this company and expect everyone else to comply with their own individual greedy needs. For example, their special personal religious beliefs in terms of food preparation. All expect the company to cater to their belief system in terms of the food. The company is actually trying to do something good, yet personal arrogance and selfishness take over and demands are made that have absolutely nothing to do with the core business. Remember, regardless of the beliefs, each individual can choose not to partake in eating of the said food. Now, oh, trouble. Policies have to be put in place in order to accommodate these people. So, a spontaneous thank you event with a few donuts is no longer possible because some people will be offended that the food isn't in accordance with their religious beliefs. WTF. Do you see where I'm going with this? Now, before everyone screams blue murder uh, and all this, yes, you are fully entitled to believe in anything that you want, even the Easter Bunny. However, you are also entitled to need any food in any manner that you want, but you have no right, let me repeat, no right to force your beliefs on others. This is selfish and disrespectful. Now, why do I say this? Because every person who believes in something different to you also has the exact same right as you do. You see, the problem arises when certain individuals do not respect other people's right to believe in what they want. And because we are such a diverse human race, it is impossible to keep everyone happy within a mass public situation within one company. It's simple logic. Now, everyone tries to accommodate everyone else and it becomes one nasty mess. 
Can you now see where complexity comes in and how it occurs? Let me give you a classic example. I was actually speaking on complexity thinking to a large company recently. And I used the term geez as an exclamation to something. Now, apparently, I had done this once before, too. One gentleman decided to put up his hand and I acknowledged him. And of course, I expected a question to pop up around the topic at hand. Now, I was busy explaining that complexity has arisen due to a lack of concise job descriptions, leadership not taking responsibility, and blame being shifted. Guess what? This, how should I put it, enlightened gentleman complained that I had offended him by using the word Jesus. I had insulted his religion as I had blasphemed his saviour. How would you have reacted? I didn't definitely not do this on, on purpose. I then calmly looked at the gentleman, and yes, he had a right to his belief, but so did everyone else in the room, and to most people, this was in not in any way blasphemous. And by making this inappropriate complaint in public in front of everyone else, he had offended me too. He then stood up, and guess what? He left the room. I have to be honest, I was actually quite thankful he did. You see, because most people, in my opinion, are the ones I'm referring to here. The troublemakers. It all revolves around them and no one else in the room. And this led me to come up with a quotation. Just because you believe in your God does not give you the right to judge my God. You can watch a one minute quick quote video on the same channel. Now, he, of course, complained and I couldn't believe it. Someone else actually accommodated his complaint and felt that uh, in future I should maybe not use the word. Therefore, my spontaneity in what I do should go away. Ha! Here's what puzzles me. This particular man has a religion with a message that says sticks and stones may break my bones, but words cannot harm me. Go figure. Furthermore, was this not the same man that the night before at the conference was consuming alcohol and telling inappropriate jokes? Hmm. I also question when he meets clients from different religions or religious backgrounds than his own, will he not do business with them just because of this? Whereas he's working for a company where the foundation and, and the vision is the turnover must be met regardless of race, creed, culture, religion. That's the core of the business. Do you see where I'm going with this? Hypocrisy, that is the problem. And I have a problem with people challenging me, but then they don't practice what they preach and what they are complaining about. So this led me to come up with another quote. Decency, respect and morals do not emanate from religion. They precede it. If you need explanation on that, also on this channel, there's another one minute quick quote, which I think you'd enjoy watching. Now, a friend of mine, after mentioning this to someone, is a professor at a university, and she used the word slave in a sentence. A student actually went to the registrar of that university, complained that this lecturer had offended her by using the word slave. Wait for it. The lecturer had to apologize to the student and the class and promise she would never offend her students with such a shameless use of this word, with this derogatory word again. Yes! This is the insanity of the world that we live in today. I said to her she should have immediately responded to the student that she as the lecturer was equally offended by the naivety and absurdity of the student's views. If anything, the leadership of that university should be taken to task for actually accommodating such an absurd complaint. Sometimes I think we've all lost it. But here's the ultimate story of the month. Oh, this is of the month. I picked up a South African newspaper recently um, on a plane where a black journalist was reviewing the new Tarzan movie. The headline of his review was Another story of white man saving black Africa. I couldn't believe it. And the editor allowed this to be published. 
Uh, to date, I'm still published. Uh, I'm, I'm still puzzled by what Tarzan has to do. Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote this in 1912, around there. What has this got to do with racism? I feel really intensely sorry for this misguided journalist that he still has such issues in his life, such hated issues. Why can't individuals of all races, cultures and religions just move on and start living with each other? Now sadly, these three examples are a mere smidgen of the absurdity which I have experienced in the last two weeks. Look around you. See what is being said in the media and the crazy complaints and accusations that people are making at work. It's one thing to have a personal issue and be filled with hatred and anger, but how come this is being allowed to be spread at the alarming rate it is and publicly? Why is someone not standing up and putting these people in their place and saying enough is now really enough? I don't want to sound nasty, but I seriously feel that certain people need a hard slap in order to dislodge that sick object that is somewhere lodged in their rare orifice. It's all good and well to preach love and respect, but I'm starting to think we need to preach common sense and not give in to the selfish and self-centered entitled individuals who are making everything about themselves. Look, if you feel offended by what I've just been saying, let me try explaining it in another way. You and you alone are responsible for your own life and your actions and the consequences thereof. No one else. Understand this, no one else. And until the day that you accept and acknowledge this, you will never find contentment and happiness. It's really as simple as that. This led me to come up with another quote. You are not entitled to anything in life, including respect. If you want respect, then earn it with your actions and deeds. I clarify this on another video on this channel. You're welcome to watch it. You see, no one says you cannot believe in a particular belief or viewpoint. That is your right. But then go and find people with a similar view and go hang out with them. But never forget that everybody else has also the exact same rights as you. Therefore, you have no right to publicly judge others who believe in something completely different. Nor should you enforce your habits onto people and companies who actually do not need to accommodate your needs. If you come into my home, into my business, or, or to come to my country, then you should respect my beliefs and laws and not try and enforce your own on me. You have the choice to leave if you don't like it. Does this make sense? You see, I've always said, in order to maintain a state of happiness, you need to share it with those around you and not bitch and moan and be a troublemaker. I hope that makes sense. After all of this, we need some solutions. So how do we cope with these people? First of all, as a leader, tell them exactly that their behavior will not be tolerated and give them a chance to reflect on their actions. If they don't improve, get rid of them. Remember, if you leave a rotten tomato in a box of good tomatoes, the one rotten one eventually affects all of them. Think about that. Second tip, acknowledge and reward and share good behavior so that it spreads to everyone around you and in your team. Then we're going to promote it. Number three, practice non-judgment. I know it's not easy, but start trying because then it becomes easier and easier and it rubs off on those around you. Fourth tip, always respect everyone you meet first. If they have a chip on their shoulder and disrespect you, also don't remain silent. Make sure that they understand that everyone else has rights too. And if they then still persist with their self-centered behavior, walk away. 
If we all did that, they would soon all learn that their attitude isn't working. But guess what? Someone has to start saying no. I do not tolerate this behavior anymore. Maybe then things will start changing for the better again on this earth. Finally, my fifth tip. Grow up. Realize that we are all different. We all grew up in different circumstances and in different cultures with different beliefs. And I believe the concept of multiculti is great, but the reality is different. Some people are different colors, religions, cultures, and sizes. So instead of bitching that someone stereotypes you by your race or culture or religion, stand up, be proud of who you are. Political correctness is not the problem. We need to get rid of the chip on the shoulder. Only you put it there and only you can take it away. It doesn't matter what anyone says to me. I know who I am and who I am comfortable with in my own shoes. So instead of criticizing others, look at yourself first. Guess what? It's called taking responsibility. Remember, our birthplace is the earth. Our race is human. Follow political views of freedom and practice the religion of love. Is this really so difficult to do? Think about it. I trust you will take this month's message in the spirit of love that I mean to send it out with. Thanks for listening. I'm Wolfgang. I'll chat with you again next month. Cheers.